Topic for today is Blazor in a Microsoft Teams tab. I'm the guy on the left, but I'm way too lazy to change our common master of the page all the time. Thomas Gott is my name. I'm working as a team lead for modern workplace solution for our company called Solvion. And this is where you can reach me and all the ego parts are important. The MVPs are, are on the bottom. Um, but the focus of today is what is ASP.NET Blazor and how can we use it in a Teams tab? First of all, what is Blazor? Um, Blazor is nothing else like another web component, another web framework. Um, it's part of ASP.NET. Um, there are two different versions. We will have a look at the two different versions. Both are G8 now. The first one, the server one, was G8 at Ignite last year. The last one, the web assembly one, the client side, was G8 last week at the build conference. And this is actually the, the most interesting one, how we can run really client side, meaning dynamic link libraries in the client. Um, all the things here, um, the main thing is that you write native C sharp code in a web framework. That's very interesting from my perspective. Um, I'm one of those old uh, SharePoint developers that used to work with what just Bert showed us, the CSOM yeah, client side and the old server side object model. And I changed the roles when everything SPFX hit uh, the reality, like I think March 1st, 2017 was the release date of SPFX. And of course, a little bit ironic, but uh, it's three years since then. It's time for a new development model, isn't it? So we are used to have a new one every couple of years. So for me, that's going to be Blazor. Difference between server and client. Um, the server application in, in Blazor runs really on your server. And is connected through a single R, a signal R connection to your client. So everything stays on the server and only tiny bits and pieces are communicated to the client. Um, the client updates regularly whenever something changes. You have this method called status change where you can push a re-render of the client. And also, of course, the client needs to be online. That provides you with a smaller download size compared to the real client side server or client side blazer. And it's a way better place to store your credentials and secrets. Why? Because on the client side version of Blazor, we are using WebAssembly. We are only using WebAssembly on the client side version of Blazor. So server side is like a regular ASP.NET architecture web application server, but the client is the new thing really pushing DLLs out to your client. On the client, we are running a mono runtime in a security sandbox like uh, your browser is using for JavaScript today already. It works on all major browsers. The only one with an, an polyfill exception is uh, Internet Explorer 11, but it runs on mobile phones, it runs on Safari, it runs on Firefox, Chrome, whatever. Um, it's a little bit slower than the server side uh, component. And as it runs on the client, it's not the perfect place to store probably your connection string to your Azure table, for example, because if you think of it, you're sending the whole application to the client upfront. That means you have a larger initial download size. For my simple demo, it already was like eight or nine megabytes, but everything in there can be looked into from, let's say, a bad person. You can decombine those DLLs, so that's not a good idea to hardcore store your credentials in there. For that, you need to talk to a server again. And the interesting part for me especially is WebAssembly Blazor runs also in an Azure static website. So we can go serverless in terms of running those applications because what happens is that at the first hit, the client downloads the whole application, the initial application, and then it can be taken offline. It can be a progressive web application. And with the use of Azure static websites, we don't even need to care from a server perspective for operations anymore. Um, what I'm gonna look today is basically this is a, a screenshot of the example, and we will have a look at how the authentication flow from Teams to your Blazor tab uh, is working, how you can call the graph, how you can get the current Teams token, and then we have a short demo how we Blazor the PNP team. Okay, enough for PowerPoint. Let's move on with the code. And the page is already running. Um, I'm running this locally uh, here in my Visual Studio uh, instance. And of course, I'm using ng-rock to publish uh, what is running locally on my machine. So can reuse that 
uh, as a tab inside of my team. And when I click here on reloading the tab, uh, I will hit the endpoint and you will see there's a redirect because we're doing the exact same thing that Bert uh, already showed us. So we're using the same flow in the background and the same access token, uh, ID token uh, thing. I also have here in my other tenant because I'm using a multi-tenant app registration at the moment, but I'm using also app registrations in Microsoft Azure. I've defined all my endpoints because I need those because I have a start page and an end page. And what actually happens in the code is in my index file in Blazor, I can use JavaScript. So this allows me to copy and paste everything I found in terms of the Microsoft Teams site. There was a, there's a nice Node.js example on GitHub and I just grabbed the code and put the authentication in the silent way from there. So I'm using the Microsoft Teams SDK. I'm using Adel.js. I'm creating my context, creating my configuration for the Adel flow and at some point hitting acquire token and then I'm getting a graph token. And the, the, the tricky part more or less is how do I get this token from the JavaScript world to the Blazor world? And luckily it's very easy. We just store it in the local storage. And why is that so easy? Um, because what actually happens under the cover already, if you look at the local storage, uh, all those variables, everything with ADL and except from the Teams context, the underscore, and the ADL access token underscore is already happening by ADL chess. So it's already storing the credentials there. And I just thought, okay, why not making it sure that I have my own version of the token as well present so that I can make sure that it's my variable storing the token there. And then I'm just grabbing the token inside of Blazor and using it. And what can I do? First of all, I can call the Teams context because I'm doing the same thing. I'm storing the Teams context that I get from the Teams SDK in my local storage. And then in Blazor, I'm just grabbing it. And here is all my detailed information. At the moment, I'm running a personal tab. That's why the Teams set path and the Teams set URL is empty. But if you deploy this tab to a team, for example, then you will get also the reference to the SharePoint parts, and then you can connect uh, one step further. I can go and call the Microsoft Graph. It's just a simple call using an HTTP client because what can I do? I have here a graph service in C Sharp and I'm just using an HTTP client and I'm taking my token. And this is the backend code. This is like a real service in ASP.NET Core. Um, what is actually running on the front end? Let's move over to this component here. That's called a Razor component. And the Razor component is a way of combining HTML over here with actually C Sharp code. And of course, I know uh, this code should only be, or the idea is that you only use C Sharp in this file here to render stuff, to have your render logic in there and to have your business logic somewhere else. But it's pretty easy. You just call or you load your Vero token in there because I'm getting it from the local storage. So I'm grabbing local storage, get item async, my access token. I have the token now, and then I can call my graph service with the token, get uh, me with HTTP client. I'm calling basically the method from over here, and I'm getting back the JSON string and can show it in my client over here. Same thing, uh, I can not only use the HTTP client, but I could also use the native graph client. For example, these are all the teams in this small development tenant where I have a, a nicer representation. And you already see I'm all played with a uh, NuGet package called, I think, Blazor Fabric that uh, makes use of the Fluent uh, UI already, because when you get one step deeper, I can ask for a detail list so getting getting more examples and I have a small uh, user interface bug here. I got need to re-render stuff that I'm trying to, to get rid of. But what I can do now, I have my team selected and get details. And in the details, I have this nice pane here. And here I get all the apps that are installed in this team. So 
this component talks to the graph, get all teams. So get all groups uh, that are teams. And then when I click one, master detail view, nice uh, flyout from the right, like we are used in Office 65 and all the details, another call. How is this done? Back to the code. I have my graph service here. I have get all teams. I'm actually using the graph service client with the built-in delegate authentication provider because this provider has a constructor that takes an existing bureau token. So I'm reusing my token that I already stored and already grabbed from the Teams SDK through my local storage. And now I create a new graph service client. And from there, it's just C sharp and calling the different endpoints, grabbing all the groups, getting through and getting all the apps and resurface it on the other side of the browser. So that's very, very easy. And all you see here basically was built in, I think three or five evenings, and I'm not a day-to-day -day developer anymore. I'm more on the architecture side. So that's the, the whole reason why it's so interesting for me to use Razor. I'm not used to uh, live in TypeScript and SharePoint framework. I am yeah have my experience from 10 years back writing stuff in .NET, but with this, I'm good to go at least to write some cool uh, proof of concept in that way. And the last one I want to show is like, okay, how can we interact with JavaScript as well? So I created this modern PNP team rooster, and then you get the idea why there is so much Windows XP references in here, because I found a CSS library that mimics XP. And of course, uh, a Chris Kent tribute, you should always include horses in your demo. So that's why there are small horses in here. Let us zoom in. So you see here what you can also do with that. Um, and then we can move on and make it also in Windows 98 style. Um, what, how is that done? Let's go back and look at our Blazed PNP team service. Actually, I'm a little bit paranoid about my demos, so I'm fetching this this chunks of data live from the PNP GitHub uh, website. So I'm grabbing all the details of this, uh, the members, all the dates, or the, the data endpoints from the website because I was afraid to misspell or forget someone. So grabbing those things here, and then in my Razor component, it's pretty easy. Loading all the PNP team members, and then for each awesome person in the PNP team, I'm rendering a diff. And then, oh, I forgot about someone because there is, of course, a special shout out to my friend Stefan Bauer. We'll have that in a minute. But I'm just visualizing for every person in that collection, I'm creating a diff. And going back, it's rendered here. And what you can do is that you can click on all. You can try to click down Elio or Erwin. But when you click on Stefan, he will come back with a typical Viennese sentence. Uh, yeah how how funny he is. Um, to wrap things up and to not go back to PowerPoint, uh, what you saw, there are two versions of Blazor. There's a server side and everything you saw today is the server side Blazor. I still need to think about how I can get the client side working with the authentication because different is also the routing is different. Uh, for a client side application, there is there are no fixed routes. You need to use the library for that and I need to find a way to make that possible with this uh, pop-up flow as long as there is no uh, single sign on for Teams tabs. But if you go back to the build uh, conference videos from last week, Nick Kramer showed what will come to Teams in terms of SSO. So tabs and bots will also be supported there. Some references to uh, people I looked up, Jeffrey Fritz from the product manager for the ASP.NET and .NET community team with cool and I think eight hours of daily streaming on Twitch about Blazor, community links, Blazor Fluent UI, and then if you think of what is possible with Blazor in the future for Teams tab, um, if single and on is working, of course, those tabs that I showed you today, and then load everything with the client side version of Blazor to a static website, and you have a serverless interface. 15 minutes and I'm done.
Excellent. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, we might go a few minutes long today, so just a word of a warning because uh, we promised some t extra time for Yannick. But uh, thank you, Tommy. Really cool stuff. It's, it's great to see this in, in practice and see how easy it is to actually do development. And that's, I think that's the promise of the placer, absolutely. So yep. if you're familiar with C Sharp, you don't have to learn about what is this thing about TypeScript and C and JavaScript. So absolutely. Yep. But thank you for that one. Thank <laughs> you.